Together, we must take back control of freedom. Together for managed democracy. Together for victory. Together for liberty. Together for liberty. Together, they fight for freedom. Welcome, Helldivers. I'll keep this short so you can get back to blasting bugs and bots. This video is all about the best settings to play on. Of course, the final answer to that really depends an awful lot on what your system specs are, but the load of testing that I've done should still be relevant. Settings wise, the main ones I want to look at here are the straight quality presets and the render scale. Between those two, you can get over 300% more performance, so let's dive straight into it. I'm gonna start with the quality presets, all at native resolution, which for this XMG Core 16 that I'm testing with is 2560 by 1600, which is on the tougher side for the RTX 4060 laptop GPU to handle, but let's see. Naturally, starting on the Ultra presets, and I'll include the high in here too as well for comparison's sake, we don't get the best performance possible. At 50.4 FPS average on Ultra or 56.6 FPS average on high, that isn't amazing. It's playable, for sure, but we can do better. Medium jumps up a touch more to over 60 FPS at 61.7 specifically, but if I add a low into the mix, well now we're talking. 97.6 FPS average is excellent, especially for this 4060 laptop at 1600p. Something I want to highlight is the visual quality difference too. Now, just because somebody has already left a bit of a smooth brain comment, the footage you're seeing was captured separately from the benchmark results. I did the same mission, but the recording did not affect the benchmark results because they were done separately. With that said, looking at the ultra quality clip, you can see how good this looks. The shadows cast beautifully, the bugs are perfectly rendered, it's just a great experience. Contrast that to the low preset, which looks flat, bland, and kind of jagged thanks to no anti-aliasing. If I swap ultra for medium, obviously this is going to look a lot closer to the low preset settings, but it is noticeably better looking. It isn't quite as beautiful as ultra, but it's perfectly serviceable. So far, medium is my preferred option. Although we are missing a fair bit of performance here, so on lower end hardware, low might be the better shout. By far the most glaring issue with the low preset is the lack of anti-aliasing. But that's just a setting we can enable, so how does that affect performance and the visual quality? Well, in the performance department, we do drop a bit of performance, going down from 97.6 FPS average down to 90.7. That's really not bad though, and the visual quality difference is well, well worth it. The shimmering on any fine details disappears, as does the sawtooth on, on every damn edge. I can't express just how much I would recommend keeping anti-aliasing on, especially with such a small performance sort of hit to it, it really is worth it. As for the render scale settings, this is rather interesting. This is the usual upscaling tech, much like DLSS and FSR, and considering this is a PlayStation game, I wouldn't be surprised to find out that this is more AMD than anything. One unique option, or actually two options, are super sampling and ultra super sampling settings. This renders the frame at higher than native resolution and actually downscales the frame to fit your display. You'd really have to be a masochist to willingly set this to super sampling, and the ultra version is just ridiculous. Even on the low preset with anti-aliasing on, it feels like this is a slideshow. I've rendered this video at 60 FPS so you can see the experience better, because the playing experience was just awful. The crazy thing is that I can't see any major quality difference. Let me know if you can notice any differences in the comments, but 
really all you're left with is the lowest performance result that I captured at just 31 FPS average or 51.5 FPS average for the regular super sampling setting, which is the same as playing on native res at the ultra preset. I know which one of those I'd rather use. Now, if we flip the render scale the other way, so that the game is actually rendering frames at lower than native resolution and then upscaling the image, well, that starts to make some more sense. Even using the ultra quality option, which is the closest to native resolution rendering possible, that adds a full 20 FPS average over the low plus AA run at native resolution. Hell, even the 1% lows are actually higher than the average on the native render scale, so it's pretty clear that it's a worthwhile choice. There might be the tiniest bit of visual quality difference between native and ultra quality, but while actually playing, I cannot say that I noticed. Here they are side by side so that you can see how they compare. To me, there really isn't much in it, which makes running at ultra quality a no-brainer. Moving down to the quality render scale setting, on the performance front anyway, well that's a pretty significant jump up again. This time to an average of 124 FPS, another 15 FPS higher than ultra quality, and a full 35 FPS higher than native res. The real question though, is is there any significant quality difference that would make you want to not use that setting? No. <laughs> no there isn't. While I am able to discern a quality difference by carefully studying the footage, when you're actually playing the game, it's no big deal at all. It's totally playable and probably the best setting outright. Once you start moving down to balance though, the quality difference starts to become more noticeable. Balanced is serviceable, but even in-game it starts to be noticeably kind of blurry. It's certainly less sharp than any of the previous settings, and while the performance does improve, it's only slight, uh, going from 124 FPS to 127.6 FPS average. That's such a marginal difference that I really don't think it's worth it. Unsurprisingly, the performance mode is even worse visually. It's verging on unplayably blurry. Details are smeared together because, well, they aren't being rendered. The upscaler is having a hell of a time trying to upscale what I have to assume is a like 720p frame to 1600p. I don't think I need to show you a comparison for this one. It's just bad. And like, for what? 1.6 FPS average more? Yeah, no thanks. And the award for the worst setting imaginable goes to Ultra Performance. Uh, look at this man, it, it's just trash. Like, it legitimately looks like you're playing at 144p. It is dreadful. You can't make out the parts of the bugs at all. You wanna headshot them? Good luck. You wanna hit that squishy weak spot? <laughs> Good luck. Just, I mean, look at the jets from the extraction shuttle. It's like we're actually playing Minecraft with how blocky this is. Compare that to the quality setting, and while there are, you know, kind of couple of blocky artifacts, it's otherwise perfectly usable. And again, for what? In my testing, I got less performance, albeit slightly, when running at ultra performance. Even the 1% lows are on the lower end, likely thanks to some instability from the upscaler having to do so much heavy lifting. So, what are the best settings? Well, personally, I'm gonna be gaming on the medium preset with the render scale set to quality. That should provide the best balance of visual quality and playability on pretty much any system. If you've got a higher end GPU though, you might want to try ultra quality or bump up the preset to high if you don't mind having a few less frames. I think ultra is a bit too cinematic for me, both in the frame rates and in visuals. And 
I think that the slightly lower end settings provide a better balance for the sort of competitive advantage as well as visual quality. But of course, that's my thoughts, and I'd love to hear yours in the comments down below. What settings are you running on, and how are you getting on with the missions? Let me know in the comments down below. If you want to see more videos like this one, you can hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to be notified when these new videos come up pretty regularly. There's also plenty of other videos on the end cards, including my latency guides for games like this uh, to see the best settings for those sorts of games, both in terms of performance and in terms of your end-to-end -end latency. Of course, if you want to support the channel, you can pick up your own latency tool at osrtt.com or check out the rest of the links in the description. Otherwise, thanks for watching uh, and uh, have fun diving into hell.